Okay, I'm not sure if the microphone's working on this thing, but I'm going to try it. So, so far I've made a window, um, which sounds relatively easy, but is actually incredibly difficult, ironically, to make. Now, the benefit of making a window here in Revit is it allows you to make one, what's called a family of windows, and then um, after you make a family of windows, you can resize the window to fit any shape or wall that you want. So for instance, say I wanted this window to be four feet wide, it would automatically resize all the parts of the window, including the hole and um, the sill and everything, to the new size. It also allows me to put windows very very quickly, which I'll show at the end, where you can literally just click create window, put it on the spot of the wall, and then you can choose the sill height or and then the dimensions of the window, and it will auto create them which makes making multiple windows or different styles and types of windows a lot easier. Now, so making these objects in the window is actually quite difficult. And so what we're going to do is we've made the first, this is called the guillotine window. We've made the top part of the guillotine for the window glass frame. We need to make the bottom part, which slides on this little hinge that we've already created. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the reference view and this little spot that you're seeing right here, this is the hinge, this little box is the hinge that the interior guillotine part of the window slides up and down against. We're obviously going to need to make a second one so that it can create a little crevice that it slides up and down in, right? Uh, basically they're like guides. Same concept with like a rolling door. Anyways, <clears throat> these right here, the outside ones, this is a sweep pattern we use to make the sill and frame. And um, yeah. anyways, so what we're going to do is create, now this is an inch wide and the catch is only half an inch. So we want to go off, off this catch. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, and we know this is, this is half an inch down. So we want it to be an inch in total. So <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to copy this object and we're going to bring it down half an inch to make it a total distance from here to here of one inch. Um, <clears throat> normally we just move this one, but we don't want to move it because it's actually referencing other objects that you can't see, but it, it's it's the base frame for it. Anyways, it's a base frame for another object. So we just need to remember, the only thing we need to remember is it's going to be um, two inches out. So yeah, we have a two inch object this is only one inch out from the outer portion. We want it two inches. So that means we need to copy this object and bring it out one more inch. That way when we copy it from the frame over, it will go over two inches, which is what we want it to do. Um, hmm, let me just think about this. Yeah, we want it two inches over because the other object is one inch, I believe. Let's double check that real fast. I, I don't want to mess that up. Yeah, it's definitely two inches and the other one's one inch. Yeah, so that one's one inch. The other one's two inches. The other one is one inch wide, two inches over. Huh, so if it's one inch wide on the bottom, Oh, so reference level, that means the top should only be one inch, I believe, wide, yeah, so one inch wide, two inches over. Okay, so that's what we got. Now we need to draw the object, right? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a sweep command, which basically gives you, um, it should show an example right here real fast. Yeah, so you select three little lines and you create an, do you see how it created like a, a shape, a three-dimensional shape? You select the three lines, then you create what three-dimensional shape you want. In this case, in that case, it was like a weird, like a I-beam shape. And then it, it, then it automatically swept that shape to make a 3D solid across whatever axes you put in there. So that's what we're going to do. Now we want to look at the exterior portion. So for the exterior portion, we already have the first one done. Um, now, 
was it interior that I had the lines? No, it was exterior. On the exterior portion, I had lines at one point. Okay, here they are. Hmm, doesn't want to let me select them. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's it's backdropping the object behind or the reference behind the object, which is what it's supposed to do. But it's yeah, it's kind of annoying. Anyways, that's no big deal. Um, uh, we don't want it to be on the outside though. Yeah, we want it to be on the inside. Huh. Huh. This is tricky. Okay, if we do it on the inside. Then, <coughs> yeah, then we can see that reference line right on this side because it's the closest one to us. Okay, so we'll do it from the inside. We could do it from the outside and then realign the objects, but that, um, honestly, it'd probably be the same speed. Whatever. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is create more reference lines that we can go down from, and we want this to oh wait no we don't want to do that this reference line goes all the way out here yeah it connects all the way out okay yeah so we want to connect from there so we're going to pick create reference line from the edge of this the window over till we complete our box. Okay. <clears throat> now there should be, if we tab through here, yeah, so there'll be four lines in there. Okay. Um, now we're going to create our sweep and we're going to pick path and we're going to start on this side want that line, that line, just pressing tab to scroll through the different available lines. And see it looked like they were two were the same but one of them was the sill and the other one was the reference line. We always want to choose the reference lines. If you choose the sill sometimes, because we're looking at it straight on, if you were to look at it in 3D you would see that the sill is actually further forward. If we did that then the object would be tilted and we don't want it to do that. We want all of the want the object to be perfectly straight, so it slides up and down. Um, so uh, that's fine. Or the one loop not allowed. Huh. Hmm. Okay, we delete that. Okay, let's yeah, discard it. That's fine. So what? Oh, get out of that. Okay, so huh? This object shouldn't be a problem. We don't need the lower one anymore. Although I. I don't think that's. Whoops. Cancel that. Ah, it's annoying. So we don't need the lower one anymore. And we don't need the lines drawn for it. So we got rid of all those reference lines. So the only one left should be that one, which is the one we need. And we drew the re other reference lines, which shouldn't have dimensionality. So if I create a sweep, hmm, sorry about this. It went through before just fine. Huh. Okay. This line, that line, this line. that line, so we got four. More than one loop not allowed. 
Huh. Interesting. Um, okay, let's. The heck, I thought I deleted that. Okay, so. Well, let me do that. No. Oh, it won't let me go up into the other object. It thinks it's... It thinks it's going into that object? Well, that's not good. Because that won't create what we want it to. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to pause it. Well, is there a way to pause? Hmm. I guess I have to stop. 